in a, uh, a job where it attracts a lot of blaggers, a lot of chances, um, it's rare to find someone who's done everything. He's been in a band, hugely successful with his brother, Spencer Davis Group. He wrote, he had hits on both sides of the Atlantic, wrote a hit that was top 10 in both the UK and in America. He then became a producer, produced the first Dire Straits album. He produced This Town Ain't Big Enough for the Both of Us by The Sparks. He was one of the founding staff members of Island Records. He then went to CBS and became one of the most successful A&R men in the world. And every single person that had emailed me said, I wish him the best of luck for tonight. He thoroughly deserves this award. And he's a brilliant bloke, a brilliant A&R man, and one of the most practical people I met, met in a business full of people who make hogwash up about the voodoo of what A&R is. It's really simple, in the words of Muff. You find a star, you find a hit record, and the rest will do itself. So, Muff Winwood, you're an a and icon. I started in the business in uh, the late 50s, early 60s, and I was in a band, you kind of saw it there. And the first time I met any A&R men was when they came up to Birmingham, and guys from Decker and, and uh, Phonogram, or Phillips as it was then, and EMI, they come up and say, we love your band, it's great. And we already knew that, you know, we knew we were great. And then they'd say, our record company's great, and you should really come with us. Did we care? Of course we didn't care. Who cares what record company they come from? Basically, they're just a waste of time. And I just thought A&R men were, were, you know, nothing really. And it was only when I really started to hate A&R men was when we made a record, all right? And then the first thing that happens, they call you in the office and they say, no, it's not really good enough. You know, and uh, you need to change this and a bit more drums on that. Go in, we'll give you another producer. And the worst thing of all, we hated most of all, is when they said, your song ain't good enough, we've got a great song for you. <laughs> wankers. That's what we call them, wankers. <laughs> and then I became one. <laughs> but... In a funny kind of a way, all that kind of works because many years later when I'm sitting in the office and I've got a young act or a young artist sitting there and I'm saying, this song isn't really good enough and you need to change this and perhaps we should have a new producer and maybe we should remix it. And I can see them looking at one another across the room and I can see it in their eyes. They're thinking, wanker. <laughs> but you know what? I understood. I just understood, you know, so it happens to us all. Um, I did most of my a and at, uh, at uh, uh, CBS and Sony, which were big uh, multinational companies that are hungry for acts every week and hits twice a week. And to do that kind of job, you have to work with a fantastic team of a and people. And in my life, I've met some and worked with some uh, wonderful A&R people, people like Annie Rosebury, Gordon Charlton, um, Colin Barlow, who's still doing fantastically down here now, Nicky Graham. Uh, I've worked with uh, Dougie Bruce, who was running around my office and stuff. It's lovely to see him around again. And, uh, of course, uh, Julian Palmer and, uh, and, and the wonderful Nick here, who always give me grief in the, my latest years at Sony. And, and I think there's... Just one other person who I'd like to mention to you, a, a wonderful guy called Lincoln Elias, who, who I met uh, in the last few years, if you like, of my life, and he kind of extended my A&R life by 15 years or so, and he was just my A&R soulmate, and uh, he was a wonderful guy to work with, and we worked together like two peas in a pod, and for all you A&R guys who know what it's like to work out there on your own and everybody's telling you how shit this is or how somebody else's stuff is wonderful and yours isn't, we all go through that. And it's a wonderful experience to have another person by the side of you who thinks exactly the same as you do and deals with things in exactly the same way. It's a wonderful booster. 
I waited many, many years for that to come to me. But when he did come to me with Lincoln Elias, it was, uh, it was a wonderful thrill. And, you know, that's what being lucky is all about. Um, one or two people just asked me, last thing, what's, what's the best piece of A&R advice that I've ever received? And actually, I can remember it. It wasn't advice. It was an instruction. I, I just started work at Head and A&R at CBS, and then, then uh, legendary Maurice Oberstein, who ran this whole business, was our chairman. And he called me into his office and said, Winwood, no first names, at Winwood, I want you to know all about everything that's good about this business. I want you to know the best bands, the best producers, the best managers, the best songwriters. You've got to know everything about the best of these people. And I'm kind of going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, and I want you to know exactly what's happening on the scene. I want you to know what everybody's talking about is the hottest band, and what everybody's talking about is the hottest new sound and the hottest fashion. And I said, yeah. And he said, and then go away and sign something completely different. Thank you very much indeed.